Hello and welcome to a new game from CCC 11's qualification phase. Lila plays Sifos and uh, Lila had a very very difficult Karo Khan in the Tar variation. The game started with e4 and after c6, d4, d5 and e5 we have the advanced variation. And here black wants to play e6 to solidify the center and then break at white center with c5. But before that he develops this bishop to, to f5 to get the bishop out of the pawn chain. And here now white has of course many many options. Knight c3 and knight f3 are the two main options. But in this one we have the third most uh, popular option and that is the tar variation with h4. White is trying to prevent e6 from from black because if e6 comes then this bishop gets trapped after g4 and we can see the bishop doesn't have squares he can go to e4 but then f3 comes and after bishop g6 h5 and bye bye light squared bishop white wins so e6 is not possible here so what can black do well one idea is to play h5 which prevents g4 but this gives up the g5 square which can be occupied by a bishop or a knight so instead of h5 another option is to play h6 and this doesn't give up any squares there are no weaknesses and if white now continues with uh, something less aggressive let's say something like knight c3 then black wants to play e6 and now if g4 comes then he can meet that with bishop h7 and black can be happy with his position However, in this game, instead of knight c3, Sifo slashed out immediately with g4. And now bishop h7, of course, is possible, but this allows white to play e6. And this is a very, very annoying move for black because it cramps his position. For example, taking this pawn would be very, very bad because now uh, this weakens the g6 square quite a lot. Bishop d3 will come. Uh, exchanging the bishops and then g6 is very weak if a queen gets there it's uh, pretty much game over also this bishop is uh, buried now there are two pawns that you would need to move forward in order to get him out and uh, you know developing him to g7 is not much better either and white also gets a lot of pressure on the e5 so this is not a fun position for black so that's why here after g4 the main move in this uh, variation is to actually drop the bishop back to d7 and guard the e6 square. In this game, however, we have another main variation. And in that one, e6 is allowed. But first, black plays bishop e4 to force f3 and weaken the g3 square. And we'll see later why is this important. And now after the bishop drops back, we have e6. And this is now the end of the book. And this is the position Lila has to work with. And it's not fun at all. I don't know about you, but I played the Karo Khan in the past and I fell for this position uh, a couple of times. And when the first time happened, e6, then I took the pawn and then I suffered the whole game, which didn't last for long because I went down quickly. But after the game, I hated myself for uh, allowing e6. And later on, I fell again. And then I hated myself even more. So this is not fun. However, it's not completely lost for uh, black. Because, yes, taking here is not good. But black has another move here, which is pretty good. And also played by Lila, queen d6. And black's position is uncomfortable. But this at least uh, is a, a good move. It attacks the pawn and also threatens queen g3 check so we can see now why provoking f3 was important so e6 being attacked white has to take now here and after king f7 this king is not so happy because he couldn't castle and so on but now at least there's only one pawn in the way of this bishop and uh, white's king is, is not so safe either with all these pawns moved up the board and now since queen g3 is still a thing, uh, white can play maybe knight e2 here. But this knight now uh, blocks the bishop. So instead we have f4. And they both agree that white is uh, somewhat better in, in this position. 
Lila now continued with knight f6, attacking g4 and uh, already threatening queen e6 check and then taking on g4. So Sifos defended that pawn with bishop h3. And now we have c5. Lila needs to, to open files and diagonals towards this king, which is uh, pretty much out in the open. If uh, black manages to get uh, past these uh, pawns, then this king will be in big, big trouble. If white takes on c5, then after queen c5, white will suffer, especially that knight e4 is coming. So this is not something uh, Sifos wants here. Instead, he played knight f3 to defend the pawn. We have now knight c6 and c3. And now bishop e4, intending to take out this knight and then win a pawn on, on d4. But in this position, we have now knight e5 check. Here, Lila was uh, expecting knight d2 attacking this uh, bishop and of course if the bishop takes then the other knights goes to f3 and defends d4 and uh, she thought that this is uh, the better option for white instead we have knight e5 check now of course the knight cannot be taken because after f takes the queen and the knight would be forked but we have king back to g8 and now short castles c takes on d4 c takes on d4 and in this position, queen b4 maybe is possible to attack d4, but Lila found an even better move, and that is h5, trying to open up the h file with uh, pawn takes on g4. And uh, the only option for white is, is g5. If, if the pawn takes here, then suddenly this rook becomes very, very strong. And from the most passive piece in this position, uh, it would be the most uh, aggressive piece attacking h4, h3, and very, very soon also the king. In this position, black would have already decisive advantage. And of course, white can't allow neither pawn takes on g4 when uh, the same thing happens. So here, Sifos was forced to play g5, but this weakens somewhat these line squares, and now this knight jumped into g4, and it stays very, very nicely on g4. It's very, very close to the white king, so it's, it's quite dangerous. And it's untouchable. Lila would be the, the happiest entity in the world if something would take on g4, for example, if the knight would take, because then again, the h file would open up and Lila could already open the champagne. So instead of uh, taking with anything on this knight on, on g4, we have instead knight c3 attacking this bishop. So bishop f5, knight e2 going to g3 attacking these two so g6 defending queen b3 now attacking b7 rook b8 bishop d2 rook h7 a4 e6 and black's position starts looking good now uh, this king on g8 is arguably safer now than uh, white's king we have bishop c3 bishop g7 intending to to take out this knight Lila keeps this rook on h7, maybe Sifos will take at some point, and then the h file opens up, you never know when uh, lock falls on you. We have knight g3 now, bishop takes on e5, pawn takes on e5, and after queen d7, Sifos decides to take out this bishop on f5, we have g takes on f5, capturing towards the center, keeping the center locked. We have rook f3 now, and rook f7, and in this position, Sifos was quite happy with his position. He evaluated at plus 0 0.8, while Lila thought that it's slightly better for black already. We have bishop f1, king g7, queen d1 now, allowing the pawn to move forward. We have rook c8, a5, rook c7, a6, knight e7. And now after pawn takes, rook takes on b7, lateral defense on a7, also eyeing b2. We have now bishop a6, rook back to b8, and b4. And Sifos is advancing this pawn, and his idea is very simple and seemingly easy to execute. This bishop drops back to e2, and then he plays b5. And white will have a very, very good control of a3, which means that the pawn will have to stay on a7. And then Sifos' plan is to uh, pile up on the a5 and attack a7 with everything. 
And this idea seems to be straightforward and uh, quite uh, easy to execute. So what can Lila do then? Well, she played here a very good move. F4, liberating the F5 square for the knight, which uh, from there could then uh, bother the, the white king and the white pieces. We have bishop e2 and now knight f5. And it looks like black drops a pawn. But actually it's not true. Taking that pawn would be a big mistake because opening the f file works in black's favor. Here Lila would have the very very strong knight e3 attacking both the queen and the rook. And the queen can defend the rook. f1 is not available. So it looks like white's way out of this situation is to take here on f7 we check but actually after queen takes on f7 this queen is now threatening to get into white's position and this queen the white queen can't oppose on the f5 since it's guarded by the knight and after something like queen e1 queen f4 is very very strong threatening mate and uh, pretty much the only way to stop that is to take out this knight but now after queen g4 check and king f2, uh, Lila would have the very very strong knight c2 hitting the queen but also creating together with the queen a barrier that uh, the white king can't cross. And now rook f8 is coming with mate. White could give a check here on, on a7 but that's really only a check and after rook f8 white gets mated. So we can see how taking on f4 is not really possible. We have instead queen e1 defending the pawn since uh, the knight also attacked h4. And now we have rook c8 attacking the bishop. And uh, taking here still doesn't work because then uh, the same knight e3 is very strong hitting this. And uh, after the rook exchange, bishop has to take on g4. And then after knight takes on g4, the queen can't oppose on f1 again because this bishop is hanging. So rook takes on f4 is not a thing. We have rook a5 now and knight e3 nicely using this f4 pawn. And this knight is going now to e4. These two knights will be very very strong soon. And uh, Sifos now played bishop d3 to guard the e4 square but Lila played queen b7 uh, defending that square. We have now rook b5 and this very very nice move now. Queen a8. Hiding with the queen but still maintaining a defense on, on the e4 square. And now after bishop d2 and knight e4, of course, taking out this knight would be a complete suicide since these two pawns are now criminals and they would move, move up the board very, very fast and this black king would be in trouble. Once this queen gets in uh, black's position, game over. So instead of uh, bishop takes on e4, we have... Uh, King g2, taking on f4 with the bishop is not good because again black has rook f8 pinning this bishop to the rook and uh, again opening the f-file helps black. Instead of bishop takes on f4, rook takes on f4, rook takes, bishop takes is also not good because now Lila would have a6 and uh, this queen now can get to this diagonal to attack this d4 pawn which is which cannot be defended so easily because after rook a5 and queen a7 how do you defend this pawn if queen a1 then rook c3 cuts the queen's defense of d4 and the uh, queen takes on d4 with check comes also the bishop is attacked this would be winning for black and uh, what else can do white bishop e3 is also not good because now queen f7 is uh, is very strong so we can see that taking on f4 is, is not really good. Instead we have king g2 and now rook c7, rook a5, queen b7 and after king h3 Lila made a very weird looking move but a very strong one. She played a6 placing this pawn in the firing line of the bishop and the rook. The bishop can even take it with tempo on the queen. So why is this a good move? Can why just take the pawn well it's very interesting if the bishop takes it then the bishop is not attacking now this knight anymore 
and after queen b6 attacking the pawn on d4 all the tactics work very nicely for for lila it's very hard to defend the pawn again if bishop c3 then rook takes on c3 is very strong and after the rook takes there's f3 the pawn now can move and will quickly go to f2 after which maybe even rook f3 will be possible for example if rook c5 now shielding the pawn f2 is strong after queen f1 rook f3 check and after king g2 rook g3 check and after king h1 rook g1 check wins the queen after which uh, the queen takes on b4 and the queen threatens all kind of checks and white will be mated very very soon so bishop a6 not possible what about rook takes on a6 well this is also very interesting because now the queen can take on a6 and after bishop takes we have rook c2 attacking this bishop which can move because then rook h2 mates and it's very difficult to defend the pawn it's actually not possible to defend the pawn uh, the best move for white here is to, to take on f4 with the rook and after rook takes bishop takes on f4 and the bishop guards the mating square on h2 but lila can continue here with knight f2 check these squares are not available so the king has to go to the second rank and now after knight d3 check lila wins back the queen and uh, after that can play rook f2 and in this position black is of course better um, lila would have rook versus bishop a very strong knight here on, on e4 and some uh, weak white pawns black is, is better so we can see how taking on e6 is not possible and that's why sifos played rook a3 to guard the third rank we have now rook f8 queen e2 attacking this once more queen b6 now attacking on d4 and again this pawn is not defensible the only way to to defend that pawn is to take out this knight this is what Sifos did but now if the pawn takes on, on e4 even though the queen can recapture and defend e4 Sifos suddenly saw problems with his position his evaluation went from 0 to minus 1.1 he took now here on e4 to defend the pawn but after rook c4 lila adds more and more pressure on, on d4 and uh, rook takes on f4 here uh, defending this pawn doesn't work because after knight f2 check hitting this queen uh, lila would win again an exchange with uh, the pressure still remaining on d4 black would be pretty much winning again in this position so instead of rook f4 we have bishop c3 but now came rook f7 rook a2 and now another science fiction move by Lila, a5 again offering the pawn which again can be taken with tempo it can be also taken by the rook and again doesn't work for white if the pawn takes then the b file opens up and after queen b3 Lila would be hitting both the bishop and the rook on a2 and after queen c2 defending both there would be queen b7 now attacking this rook and this rook can't really move because there's a check on h1 the best move here is again queen g2 allowing this rook now to take on c3 if uh, the rook takes and uh, then the queen would shield this diagonal but now knight e3 is very strong hitting the queen and also preventing the rook to defend the bishop and uh, this would pretty much force rook e3 but now after queen takes king takes pawn takes uh, bishop e1 and rook takes on d4 black wins of course again so this is not good and uh, taking with the rook is not better either because now there's rook c3 winning a bishop because if the rook takes then knight f2 wins the queen so taking the pawn is not possible Sifos played here b5 and now we have a4 rook b2 knight d3 again this bishop is attacked bishop d2 and now knight d5 and uh, now rook takes on d4 is unavoidable here after bishop d2 if the rook takes here looks tempting but white has this counter blow 
bishop e3 when uh, the bishop skewers these two and uh, this would be better for white actually but after knight d5 there's nothing stopping now rook takes on d4 if rook d3 then uh, the pawn moves up the board again so there was nothing to do c was played here king h2 but now the rook takes here we have queen e2 and now queen c5 g6 rook f5 b6 knight takes and Xiphos's position collapses uh, very very soon he is now down material we have bishop c3 rook d7 queen a6 attacking this knight queen d5 counter attacking the rook rook f2 defends queen b7 and now we have a queen exchange followed by rook b2 pinning this knight but we have rook b8 and now lila can unpin like this we have bishop d2 knight d7 rook takes on b8 knight takes on b8 and now bishop takes on f4 knight c6 king g3 and now knight d4 attacking this rook if this rook comes here then white loses the bishop after this check so the rook had to go to f2 and now we have a3 rook a2 but now the knight defends the spawn from b5 we have bishop c1 trying to take it but after rook f8 taking that pawn is not possible because after rook a8 this bishop is pinned and will be lost so instead we have bishop d2 king takes on g6 now bishop b4 rook a8 and <clears throat> everything is uh, very nicely defended and now Leela's king will come in and pick up this pawn after which this pawn will uh, make the difference and the white king can come to f4 to, to prevent the black king advancing because then after rook a4 this bishop is pinned and will be lost again so we have instead king h3 but now we have king f5 bishop f8 king e4 bishop e7 rook a4 king g3 and now <clears throat> the king takes the pawn king h2 king d5 rook d2 check knight d4 and now slowly these pawns will advance we have rook a2 e5 bishop f8 knight b5 and slowly but uh, surely uh, lila wins all the pawns and will advance her own pawns we have now the king going up the board a2 and now lila will queen the a pawn here after king g2 we have a new queen the rook has to take and uh, now the e pawn moves up the board and the h pawn is also moving up the board but it's taken out and now we have the e pawn queening and here Sifos didn't even bother to take that queen so queen takes bishop and now we have rook a7 king b8 and uh, we have mate very very soon a very very difficult Karo Khan with black but Lila managed to uh, to come out on top I would like to thank to René, Adolf, Mark, Gary, Guilherme, Sebastian, Todor and Radu for their contributions check out some of the other videos on the right please subscribe help me get to a thousand thanks for watching and see you soon bye bye